This is the Earth Science Classroom. This video is looking at CEC, or the cation exchange capacity, and soil nutrients. So looking at the subsoil, the B and C layers, and how the CEC functions within the soil, and the combination of both the colloids, the clay colloids, the humus organic colloids, plus the soil solution, which is the water, kind of create this mode of transportation for nutrients to flow from the soil, from the mineral and organic material through the pore space and with water into the root hairs, into the root system to flow as food for the plants and animals. So CEC or the cation exchange capacity is defined as the total amount of exchangeable cations in the soil, in particular to do with the colloids in the B and C layers, which is leached down and have a increase of colloid amount or concentration within these subsoil layers. And the CEC is the amount of available sites in which the cations in the soil or soil solution can bind with the anion or the negatively charged colloids to bind and each of these cations and both the acid cation and the base cation can easily be exchanged between the colloids, the soil solution and into the roots themselves. The CEC acts as a storage unit for, or a pantry, so to speak, for the roots to selectively choose the cations that want to be transferred from the colloid directly or the soil solution through diffusion or mass flow into the roots as food so that the plants have access to these cations to take as food and also as an act of a buffer for the pH of the soil. So we have to discuss soil layers, the profile and the horizons of the soil. It depends on the maturity of the soil, how long it's had to form over time, whether it has a full five mass horizons from the O down to the R, or just a couple, but you have this percolation and leaching and infiltration of water, the leaching is the, the removal and, and translocation of nutrients down through gravity to a subsoil layer like the B horizon where the clay colloids are going to accumulate and a lot of the organic material can also accumulate and you have the bacteria and breakdown of material at the top going down leaching, the process of weather and erosion, taking of these cations and these nutrients and elements down with the water in the soil solution, down with gravity to the B horizon, where you'll find the majority of the CEC action takes place. So a little bit about the chemistry and also physics with CEC or the cation exchange capacity. Well, it's all based on the electrostatic forces and the attraction between the negative and the positive forces of either of the electrons and protons within the nutrients, within the elements, and how this force of attraction is going to attract the positive cations towards the negative anions on the colloids, and this exchange of nutrients between the colloids, the soil solution, the water, and eventually the roots, and the concentration grain on the roots, diffusion, and mass flow, create this flow of nutrients through the soil into the roots and eventually into the plant to create this beautiful surface biome or ecosystem that we come to know on the terrestrial part of the planet. Now these exchangeable cations are either going to be alkali or base or acid, so based on the pH scale. So the base or alkali cations are calcium, magnesium, potassium and sodium, the four major nutrients really for the plant and then the acid or the non-alkali cations are hydrogen and aluminum and ammonium now these three are going to release more of the hydrogen ions in when they chemically react in solution which would lower the ph and make it more acidic versus the base cations which are the calcium magnesium potassium and sodium they're going to release hydroxyl ions into solution which causes the ph to rise and become more alkali now we know that because of ph range soil and the nutrients flow better in a certain range of ph and the amount of these cations either alkali or base can buffer and kind of balance out the acidity or the ph 
based on how much of each is there present in the soil and also how much is done through weathering erosion and the solution and leaching and how much the root actually takes up and takes out of the soil solution and the colloids and also the amount of CEC in general of the colloids. Now the base saturation that is the amount or percentage of base cations that are available in the soil and it's a, a formula of the base cations over the CEC times 100. So basically it's like how much base cations are there in the soil versus the overall negative sites available for exchange in the colloids. The colloids could be either the humus, the organic material colloids, or which, which are very high CEC potential or range versus the smaller clay mineral colloids which have a smaller CEC total amount. But the humus organic material have a way higher amount of CEC potential than the minerals do. But there's more minerals generally than there are organic material in the soil, especially in the B horizon. So as I mentioned before, the CEC is based on the exchangeable sites, the cation sites available with the soil solution and the colloids. Now the colloids are very small particles by the clay particles, which are the mineral component of the soil in the B horizon, ones that are broken down and leached down. And also the organic material, the humus, which is the broken down, decomposed level of organic material that has been brought down by a soil solution down to the B horizon in the soil. So these two colloids have the exchangeable sites, which are negatively charged, the anion, which then can attract and hold the cations in position for any kind of transfer that the plant roots may or may not want to take based on the nutrients. So as an overview, CEC is defined as the cation exchange capacity, which is the total amount of cations available to exchange in the soil and the B horizon with the colloids, with the soil solution, and with the roots. It is an indicator for plant health and the soil health and how fertile the soil can be. It is an indicator to see what nutrients the plants want, and it's a way to hold and maintain nutrients around the root for uptake for the plant growth and biomass. So it's a very important part of soil science to understand both the chemistry of the cations and the alkali and the bases and which ones are going in, the physics in terms of the forces of uh, attracting the two together, and the combination of geoscience of the soil layers and the end result of creating this beautiful vegetation and plants through nutrient and growth. And so generally the, the organic material has a way higher CEC capacity, 50 times that of clay. And the general rule is the increase in clay minerals, the increase in CEC, the increase in nutrients. Also the in increase in organic material would equal the amount of or high amount of CEC in the soil as well. And again, a greater chance for growth of any kind of plants that are or have, have their roots in that soil. So it is pH dependent, and we also measure this CEC in a centimole per kilogram. And generally, a typical soil would be 5 to 25 centimoles per kilogram. Uh, in excess of 25 would be a higher increase in clay, or anything above 50 to 100 centimoles per kilogram would be more organic soils. So this whole process of the CECs, the soil layers, the leaching, the water, the percolation, the pore space, the water, it's all to do with supplying the roots with the correct amount of nutrients at the right time, the transport mechanism to feed the roots, to feed the plants, because that is the whole idea of soil is to combine all these spheres and all these mechanisms and processes together in one thin medium to allow the surface vegetation to flourish and create biomes and ecosystems and linked with the climate, with the precipitation and the temperature is going to create this weather and erosion and create the soil formation and create the whole thing is one big positive feedback loop. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel which has all these videos on earth science.